Welcome back to Forecast Lab. On this Wednesday afternoon, we find ourselves in between weather systems. We have one convectively driven weather system in the southeastern U.S. that will be moving up the coast into the Carolinas and things getting active out there in the western states once again. A heat wave continues in Central Africa, capturing the hottest temperature in the world, 113 degrees in central Chad at the town of Bokoro. And the world's cold spot outside of Antarctica, that's going to be in northern Russia, down to minus 41 degrees at Kazachie. Here in the U.S., the weather map this afternoon looking like this. Strong cold front in the southeastern U.S. Showers and thunderstorms around the Jacksonville, Tallahassee area spreading up into the Carolinas. And in the west coast, there's our next weather system coming in from the Pacific. We'll give you a better look at that. I do have the fronts a little bit different in Oregon. This was analyzed after the fact after I did those U.S. maps and I came out with something like this. But this here, possible area of Bear Clinic redevelopment and a very deep occlusion, 983 millibars, well west of Washington. We've had quite a bit of dry air advection into the northeastern U.S. However, plenty of tropical moisture in Florida along the Atlantic coast from Jacksonville up to Wilmington, 1.5 to two inch precipitable water amounts. And still some residual moisture in Texas, about 0.75, helping to support a marginal risk for severe weather in central Texas. On the west coast, there's our next weather system, almost one inch of precipitable water, part of an atmospheric river feeding into San Francisco and the northern Sierras. Here's the integrated vapor transport maps. This is a good way to visualize the atmospheric river. Looking at low end amounts, about 300 to 400 for IVTs, focused on Northern California initially, and then dying off overnight. The remnants confined to Stockton, Reno, and Winnemucca late tonight. Here's a very interesting sequence from the mesoscale models. I've got the moisture here at the surface in red, and of course the precipitation in green, blue, and other colors. So you can see the precipitation field starting around Mount Shasta, Medford, Eureka, and spreading inland. And you're going to see moisture start to appear in Nevada as that mixes downward from the atmospheric river, which is surging northeast over that region. So going into tonight, the snows develop late this afternoon in the northern Sierras, and you can see them picking up there around 5, 6 p.m. And another impulse spreads in from the west, two of them, and those spread some heavier precipitation bands inland, and especially out there in the foothills along Interstate 80, spreading into the Reno area overnight. This is going to be about midnight, and there's that moisture starting to show up at the surface. That's that convection funneling the moisture down to the surface through mixing. And snow showers in northern Nevada, Lake Tahoe, Carson City, going into tomorrow. And that's going to be the last frame that I have. And still a lot of residual showers all the way from the central San Joaquin Valley to the coasts of Oregon. There's the satellite imagery for this afternoon cold front moving inland and back behind it, steeper lapse rates, drier air aloft, and cold advection convection. So we get that open cell cumulus pattern. Winter storm warning for tonight into tomorrow morning for the northern Sierra Nevada range north of Yosemite. That's going to be above 4,000 feet. Could be 6 to 18 inches of snow with up to 3 feet in the higher elevations. Snow levels dropping from 5,000 down to 4,000 tomorrow morning as that cold air advection filters in. And winter weather advisories from Mammoth Lakes up to Lake Tahoe for 1 to 5 inches of snow. And lake wind advisories further to the east with that very strong southwesterly flow gusting up to 55 miles per hour. Here's what it looks like on the standard 850 millibar chart. Very subtle feature at 850. There's enough of a gradient right there to support a front at 850. 
So that's going to be the reflection up there at about 5,000 feet, and that right there would be the 850 millibar warm front. And then an occlusion extending northwest towards the center of the low. And there's the Q vector chart for 6 p.m. Strong lift offshore right there that moves into Northern California, probably coming on shore about 10 p.m. That's what the high resolution rapid refresh was picking up on up there along the coast and into the Northern valleys. So strong lift coming inland tonight and then moving into the Great Basin interior tomorrow morning. Another little band of lift early tomorrow morning, and then we should see the dynamics start to subside a little bit. Most of the heavier lift moving out into Wyoming, where they have winter weather advisories for tomorrow. Some areas of concern out there in central Texas. We've already got storms initiating from about Waco back towards the hill country. I've got the SPC marginal risk right there. And the surface chart shows that we're not really working with very much moisture. Dew points in the mid 40s. So this is somewhat of an inverted V type situation. So there is the potential for some high winds. I think that would be the main concern. And there's those clusters of cells from Austin back towards Brownwood and over towards Rock Springs. Looking at the photographs and checking out the potential for severe weather, photographs not really looking that great. In fact, it favors left movers. So in this kind of situation, I would expect splitting storms, lots of cell interactions, and maybe a few dominant left movers. There's that vague inverted V, not classic for a classic setup. We'd want to see that moisture line come down kind of like that. Don't really have that, but uh, that's that little pinched off area there in the mid-levels supporting elevated convection. So these bases quite high, probably around 10,000 and up. And in Florida, yeah, that's where we have the tropical air, the 1.5 to 2 inch precipitable water amounts, supporting a very rich air mass, two points near 70. In fact, in the mid 70s there around Tampa. MCS from northern Florida offshore. And as we go north, more tropical air dew points in the mid 60s and another area of convection forming all the way up into North Carolina. And then we get north of that warm front. Temperatures cool off into the 40s. And there we have more of an overrunning situation. However, this region here in the southeastern US, this is a bear clinic zone. Here's the mesoscale model run for the southeastern U.S. Just ignore this thing at the top that says dew point temperature. I'm still in the process of getting all this organized. But you can see as we go into tonight, this is going to be about 5 p.m., an expansion of precipitation in southern Georgia. In fact, this whole area is going to expand as we get that upper level lift, interacting with that deep moisture. And then as we get into the 9 p.m., 10 p.m. hours, yeah, substantial precipitation from the Carolinas down to southern Georgia. So a very rainy night in the coastal Atlantic, all the way from Delaware down to Raleigh, Charleston, Savannah, down towards Jacksonville. And that brings us to tomorrow morning. And the rain starting to move off, and we should see a gradual improvement into tomorrow afternoon. But that's what we're looking at for precipitation potential from the National Digital Forecast Database through tomorrow. One to two inches pretty common with much higher amounts in eastern North Carolina, upwards of four inches. Even all the way up into New York, over an inch. So let's take a look at that forecast. You're going to see the system in the southeastern U.S. lift up the coast and an expansion of that precipitation. And on the west coast, the Southern Pacific weather system moving into California and Nevada. So by midnight, there we go. Snow bands back into the northern Sierras, as we mentioned, and plenty of precip up the east coast. Tomorrow morning, midday tomorrow, and tomorrow evening. This system starting to dry out in Nevada and Arizona, but still some snow and rain in Utah. Meanwhile, on the east coast, the northeastern seaboard getting quite a bit of rain. 
very little of it in the form of snow. Later tomorrow night into Friday, as we return for the weekend show, we're going to be looking at a map similar to this, a new push of cold air coming down through the northern plains, Bear Clinic weather system around Sioux Falls, and a new Pacific system moving into California. And there it goes. Another atmospheric river spreading inland. And it's going to be quite extensive as we go into the weekend, especially in Arizona. Going to be a wet weekend there. And it crosses the Rockies on Sunday, spreads into the Great Plains. Then we're going to be looking at thunderstorms returning for parts of the Great Plains for early next week. Strong weather system in Kansas, Pacific Front extending south, and Canadian air wrapping around the west side for Tuesday. Everything spreading northeast. Midweek looking pretty stormy in the eastern U.S., along and east of the Appalachians. And then a very potent compact weather system diving southeast through the northwestern states on Wednesday. And you can see that tracking into the northern Rockies, the Great Basin area, and that will have quite a bit of snow and rain with it as it moves into the northern plains. That takes us to the last panel. Late next week, another push of cold air coming down into the Rockies and the Great Plains, so we're not quite done with the early spring weather. One last look at Texas before we close up. There's San Antonio, there's Austin, and we've got one strong storm in South Austin near Manchac crossing I-35 at this time. Could be some gusty winds in that thing. It is going to be high-based. And as we go further north, other cells up there near Lampasas, Fort Hood, and on up towards Brownwood. At this time, no severe warnings. So we'll go ahead and close up with a little bit more footage from the San Antonio area taken yesterday. Thanks very much to Greg for this footage. Anyway, we'll be back for another edition of Forecast Lab on Friday. Hope you have a great one, and we'll see you back in a couple days. Bye-bye.